Good morning, Northminster, and welcome to our online worship service for today. First off, it is June, which means happy Pride, everyone. I hope that you are able to celebrate whether you are a part of the LGBTQ community, whether you are an ally to the community, fly your colors with pride. Happy Pride, everyone. With it being June, this also means it is the beginning of our next sermon series. We're going to be talking about the Matthew 25 initiative all summer long. So we have signed on to be a Matthew 25 church and we are going to learn exactly what it means. We're going to go into all the details, but today we are starting off by discussing the parable of Matthew 25 and the sheep and the goats. So get yourself ready to talk about sheep and goats. But folks, being that it's June also means that we are weeks away from our first outdoor worship service. This first one is going to be loaded because it's one of our first times we will be worshiping together as a congregation in a long time. I believe since the Christmas drive-in service. So we are going to be honoring our fathers on fa since it's Father's Day weekend. Since it's our first time together, we also have something special planned for all of you who have graduated some form of school. So if you are a recent graduate, we have something coming your way, so make sure to show up. But we are also planning to have a cupcake celebration afterwards to just enjoy each other's presence. And so I hope to see you all there on June 20th. Some folks have been asking about mask wearing at the outdoor service. Yes, masking is optional. Please wear a mask if you feel more comfortable that way. But also, we are going to be allowing congregational singing, but ask that if you sing, please wear a mask. You can put it on just to sing the hymn, but it's just an extra layer of precaution because so much air goes through you when you sing and project that we want to keep particles and aerosols as cl uh, as closely contained as possible. So if you are going to sing, please wear a mask. But with that, I hope to see you all there on June 20th. Folks, our Wednesday morning studies and our Tuesday morning studies are continuing on. Check the website or the Northminster notes for the details on exactly what we will be doing in each of those. But folks, Lastly, with the change of season means we are once again collecting cereal for summer. So you can drop by cereal boxes at the office. I personally will be there on Mondays and Tuesdays if you want to drop it off with me. But we will have a collection bin for our outdoor worship service. So you can donate money on the Presbytery site or bring your physical boxes of cereal to our outdoor worship service to donate to this long-standing program of donating cereal for summer. So folks, I know that as we're gearing up for summer, there is things changing, things are going on. We have the outdoor worship, a new sermon series. Everything is on the website look out for the Northminster notes and the newsletter. But folks, with all this wonderful richness happening in the life of the church, let us take a moment and prepare our hearts and our minds for worship today. We come, for God gathers us here, with that community called faith, where the hungry are served first, where the thirsty drink life's water. We come, for God welcomes us here into that home called grace where the naked are clothed in robes of hope, where the stranger is embraced as a long lost prodigal. We come for God reunites us here, siblings and kinfolk in that family called love, where the imprisoned receive justice, where the sick are cradled in God's peace. We come because we know that God meets us here. Let us worship God today.
live in to hope of captives freed, of sight regain the end of greed. The oppressed shall be the first to see the year of God's own The blind shall see with insight and with clarity, removing shades of pride and fear, the vision of our God brought near. Live into hope of liberty, the right to speak, the right to be, the right to have one's daily bread, to hear God's word and thus be fed. Live in hope of captives freed from chains of fear or want or greed, but now proclaims our full release to faith and hope and joy and peace. The scripture this morning is from Matthew 25, verses 31 to 46. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him. Then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another, as a, se a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you who are blessed by my father, Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food? Or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you? Or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of those who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, you that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me, naked, and you did not give me clothing, sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, truly I tell you, just as you did not do it, to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God, our shepherd, we come here today eagerly waiting to hear a message from you. 
to hear your word for us today. So open our hearts and our minds so that we may be open and receptive for what you have to say to us today. And that we might be inspired to live out those words in our lives. Amen. I've thought a lot about sheep and goats. I've thought a lot about it in part because I love working with their wool. I love crocheting and got into spinning for a few a few years ago and have worked with both sheep wool and goat wool. Working with it in my hands and it's similar and it makes me think what is the difference between these? But this thought of mine goes back farther than this week, farther back than my journey through making my own yarn. Actually, it goes to when I was a kid in a Chinese restaurant looking at the placemat. For those of you who may have done the same thing, you will be well acquainted with the Chinese zodiac placemats. It lists the years that you were born yeah. and associates it with different animals and different general traits that you're thought to have if you were born in certain years. I was born in the year 1991, which actually made this kind of pastime of looking at the Chinese zodiac very confusing. Because the thing is, while most of these Zodiacs were consistent from placemat to placemat. My year was not. I was either a sheep, or I was a lamb, or I was a goat, and no two Chinese pl Zodiac placements seem to have any consistency of which of these 1991 was. None of the other years seem to have this discrepancy, but the thing is sheep and goats are not the same thing! They're similar, but they are not the same animal. And so I started learning about sheep and goats from that age, long before I started spinning wool, because I wanted to know whether I was the year of a docile pack animal, the year of a mischievous, stubborn animal, or the year of the sacrificial lamb who is perpetually made to be eaten up by the world. I wanted to know the difference. And so here is a little bit of what I have learned. Sheep and goats are actually very closely related. They are from the Bovidae family and the Caprina subfamily. They were some of the first animals to be domesticated by humans in the Levant region, basically modern day Iraq, about 9,000 years ago. Both animals are, were bred for their pelts, for their wool, for their meat, and for their milk. So these were incredibly useful animals for the development of human civilization. We domesticated them and we have grown up and developed our cultures and societies alongside them. Sheep and goats are also able to distinguish voices, which is amazing. Both have this skill. Sheep are well known for being able to recognize the voice of a stranger versus the voice of the shepherd that takes care of them. They will call when they hear the specific voice of their shepherd. Similarly, goats know their own name and are willing to come to you when you call them. So once they both have this understanding of human language that developed because we have developed alongside them. But the weirdest thing of all about sheep and goats is this. I learned this from my anthropology professor who specifically studied the dietary habits of the people in the Indus Valley region in the development of that society. So he was in there in the archaeological digs looking at their dietary habits. So looking at the 
ancient butcher shops, and what he told my class is that he couldn't tell whether they were eating sheep or goats. And we were like, uh, Dr. Bradley Chase, why? And he told us that evidently sheep and goat skeletons are near indistinguishable. You can't tell what bones you're looking at without DNA testing. He didn't, he couldn't tell which one he was looking at and he's an expert in the field. Like what? That, that's, that's craziness. But yes, he went on to explain that goats have 60 chromosomes while sheep have 54 chromosomes and yet their skeletons are identical. Except for the horns, which were not always there. What? Slight correction here. In doing some fact checking, there is a way to distinguish between sheep and goat bones that does not require DNA testing, but it confirms what I remember from my anthropology class that this is an issue in archaeological digs, is distinguishing sheep and goat bones. But the thing is, these are, once again, not the same animal. Sheep and goats are very distinct. So what separates them other than six chromosomes of their DNA? Well, sheep and goats are have notoriously different personalities. Sheep are natural flock animals. They love being in a herd. They get very panicky when they're out by themselves, and so they love to be in a group together. What is good for one sheep is often good for the whole herd. If one sheep finds a good patch of grass, the rest will follow. They're really easy that way to keep a track of the entire flock because they like to stick together. And they're generally considered shy and docile, and they're very gentle towards humans. Goats, on the other hand? While yes, goats need their herd for their emotional well-being, they are known for being independent, mischievous, and a bit stubborn. <laughs> goats aren't actual grazers. They actually like to forage, and they like to forage alone, which means they're also notorious escape artists. They escape the pens. They also are willing to beat up on each other. They're brazen in their actions, but not only that, but also you have to keep an eye on goats. While sheep you can set in the field and like they'll do their thing and may mostly stay together, goats get into trouble. Especially if you let them loose in your garden. Because goats will eat the food you're trying to grow, which means if you don't keep an eye on the goats, they'll eat you out of house and home, which ironically makes it closer for the goat itself to be on the dinner table if you eat all the vegetables you're trying that your owner's trying to grow, right? So while sheep and goats have a lot of crazy similarities, almost mind-blowing at times, some of their dis biggest distinctions is in their personalities, in how sheep are much more herd and communal minded and how goats tend to be a lot more individualistic in their personalities. Jesus too seems to divide out sheep and goats in this parable by their actions and personalities. What we see is that the son of man, the king, comes to a herd of both sheep and goats and separates them out. And the king doesn't separate them out by, like, how much wool they've produced. It's not how productive they've been. It's not how fat they are and how much meat they have on them. It's not even about how well they listen to their shepherd. Sheep and goats both respond to the voice and understand the king, and both were attentive to what the king told them to do. No, what distinguishes the sheep and the goats in this parable is how they treat each other when no one's watching. 
when no one's holding them accountable, or at least when they don't know someone is. What we find is that the sheep were concerned about the herd. They were concerned about the ones that were hungry, the ones that were suffering, the ones that were, I mean, sick and in prison, the sheep that were naked and that were poor. And so the sheep kind have that herd communal mentality and helped out the least of these just because. Because it was good for the herd, because the other sheep were in need. They didn't do it because the king told them to. They were actually kind of confused when the king was like, Hey, thanks for doing this for me. And they're like, uh, uh, when, when did we care for you, son of man? Uh, I don't remember doing it for you. And the son of man in the story is like, no, 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 no. When you did it for each other, that's when you served me. I was watching when... When, when you helped one another out, when you cared for the herd, I watched you. Thank you. And then the king turns to the goats and says, yeah, you didn't do that. And they're like, excuse me? We would have tended to you, son of man, king, if we saw you were hungry. But the king says, yeah, you may have done it for me, but... You didn't do it for each other. You you didn't help each other out. You didn't care for the sick or the poor or the hungry. You didn't even give a drink to those that were thirsty. So we're told that the goats didn't do that. We're not really told why, though. There's not an explanation, and I wonder if the goats would have had some kind of defense ready. Maybe some were just keeping their head down and just trying to get enough food for them and their kids that they they didn't think about caring for the rest of the herd they they were just they're trying to get enough for themselves and their own maybe there were some goats that were really greedy though maybe some of the goats were trying to eat as much food as possible as quickly as possible so that the other goats couldn't eat what they perceived as theirs, and so they're just gobbling up as much as they could. Maybe some of the goats were actively bullying each other. It's something goats are known to do. They kind of harass other animals at times, so maybe some of the goats were being mean, actively being mean to one another. And then maybe Maybe there are some goats who just didn't trust the herd, didn't like the herd, and so were just going to pursue their own happiness in their own ways, and were just willing to jump the fence in the pursuit of just everything they wanted. We don't know what the goat's explanation was for why they didn't tend to the herd and the needs of the rest of those around them. All we know is that the sheep did. And they didn't do it for a reward. They didn't do it necessarily to make themselves feel better. They did it just because. They did it because it was good for the herd. Now, we are going to go step by step throughout this sermon series and look at each of the actions that the sheep are applauded for. We're going to go step by step and look at what they meant in Jesus's time, kind of give it an idea, and look at how we're doing today and how the situation looks today. But I want to pause today and think about the herd. Because a lot of what the sheep are applauded for is for caring for the rest of the flock. Which has me wonder today, who do we consider our flock? Do we care mostly for our families and our loved ones or our friend group or the community organizations we are involved with? Or is our flock the city of Troy and Birmingham? Is our flock the United States or sometimes a subset of the United States population? 
what does it mean to think of the entirety of all of humanity over all the planet as part of the flock? How do things change when we think about the different sizes of the different flocks and if we're meant to care for all of it, how does it change the dynamic of how we try to emulate these actions as trying to be sheep-minded people? Because I'm going to say this flat out, I don't know anyone who is heartless enough to see someone in their immediate circle that is struggling to buy food and go, oh no, they deserve to be hungry. Oh no, my friend is out of housing, like, like not wanting to help get them a roof over their head. I don't, most people I know are not heartless enough that if someone doesn't have clothes, they wouldn't give the shirt off their back. The question becomes, where are the people who this is the case? How do we feed the hungry in a part of the flock we don't always see? How big is our flock and how do we care for the entirety of the flock? Is it the entirety of Metro Detroit? Because caring for the flock might not just be one-to-one -one relationships. Not just giving the, your leftovers from takeout to the homeless guy on the corner. What we are going to be exploring, especially as part of the Matthew 25 initiative, is the ways that tending to the flock best may be changing systems. Changing systems in our culture. That feeding the hungry may not just be giving that box of cereal. Yes, please donate to our cereal for summer campaign. Please still do that. We are collecting cereal. But the qu but but feeding the hungry may also be asking why are they hungry? Why are they hungry when they have a full-time job? What is happening to make it so so many people are without stable housing? Why is it that some people can't drink the water? These are going to be the questions we are investigating and part of this is asking how big is our flock? How big is our flock and how do we tend to the flock as a whole when it may be bigger than just our immediate area, our immediate community? What does it mean if we are a part of God's flock which encompasses the entire world? What does it mean to tend to the least of these when we are when we realize our flock is so much bigger. See, that's actually the question that is most interesting to me because I know most of you know that life isn't ultimately about your jobs and productivity. I think we know that. And that in the end, what we crave is relationships. What we crave is to be cared for, for people to notice when we're struggling and to be a part of a community I think we want to be part of a flock. We want to be seen as useful. We want to hear the Son of Man, the King, say, good and faithful servant, well done. We want to be sheep. I know that sheep is on the internet a slang term for people who just follow the crowd, who don't think for themselves, but it's almost... I, I'm so frustrated with the term sheeple, which is a derogatory term uh, mostly used by those who believe in conspiracy theories, to denigrate people who are willing to put the needs of the community ahead of themselves, who believe in expert science, scientists who are trying to do their work for the good of the entirety of the herd. Being sheep is being herd minded caring for the individual sheeps and being caring for the collective as well so 
as we go out today, let us let us think about who is our herd? Who who do we naturally consider our herd? And what are the ways that we can expand our understanding of the herd? How do we engage with people that maybe we see as outside of our immediate herd, but are still part of God's herd? Because being our calling to be sheep, sheep following our shepherd, Jesus Christ, is to take notice of the other sheep. We're not to be goats with our head down, consuming as much as possible, jumping the gate, headbutting others. We're called to be sheep, looking out for one another. This is what the voice of our shepherd is calling us towards. And as sheep, we know the voice of our shepherd. So let us follow him. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus, you said to us, ask and it will be given to you. Search and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened for you. We trust in your grace. And so we offer our prayers for the church and the world, neighbors and loved ones. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask your provision for all people Teach us compassion and generosity. Put an end to economic exploitation. Fill this world with your abundant life. Lord, 
in your mercy, hear our prayer. We search for your beloved community. Break down the systems of oppression. Dismantle patterns of privilege. Establish justice and equality for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We knock at the door of your house. Gather us in as disciples of your way. Nourish us in faith and faithfulness. Send us out to share good news. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Living God, we ask, we search, we knock. Answer our prayers with the power of your spirit, who transforms our lives to do your will. And so we say, pray, pray the prayer that Jesus Christ, our shepherd, taught us to pray saying, our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but to deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I've thought about the difference between sheep and goats since I was a kid looking at the that Chinese zodiac placemat at Chinese restaurants. 
I remember as a kid trying to figure out which one was better because sheep always seem kinder, but there is something about the stubborn independence of goats that I per personally connected with. In this, this parable, it seems like everyone is sorted out and either you're entirely a sheep or entirely a goat. And there's part of me that wonders if maybe we're all a little bit sheep and a little bit goat. Because I know there are times where it's much easier to look at the herd of people as a whole and care for the needs of everyone. Excuse me. <laughs> and care for the needs of everyone. It was easy when when the mass mandates came out and it was a way to both care for myself but care for those around me and it's why I continue to wear masks in public is because well it's good for the herd maybe a slight inconvenience of me and I might smear lipstick all over my face when I wear it but it's my way of caring for the least of these, for those who are immunocompromised and still can't get vaccine vaccinated or have other concerns that lead them to a spot where they feel vulnerable. But I know there's other days where I'm a bit more like a stubborn, independent goat that wants to jump the fence and run away from society. I... Sometimes people are frustrating and I just don't. It's so hard to care for the herd because the herd seems to be doing dumb things. Even that I just disagree with. So th there's your honest confession for today. But I also wonder how much being a sheep is about practicing sheep-like behaviors. Practicing behaviors and cultivating a sense where, yeah, you just, you consider the needs of the herd. Consider the needs and pay attention to who is the least of these. Listen to the stories of the least of these. Get to know the least of these. Where are the least of these? And that is what the next few sermons are is going to talk about. Like, who is even these people that we hear about that are the least of these? How do we get to know them? Where are their stories? Where can we hear them? How, if we are more like a goat, can we learn to be a sheep? But folks, as you go out today, Know that God, your creator, has made you lovingly, beautifully, and set out a path ahead. God, the creator, has made fields of green for us to wander in, and cool streams to drink from, and Jesus, our shepherd, calls us forward on this journey of faith. And the spirit is the one guiding us along the way Thanks be to God. Amen. Shatter the systems of greed.
need. Jesus, be with us, make use of our hands, lift up your people in need. Jesus, be with us, help us each day to follow the gospel. And live as we pray. Send us your spirit and show us your way. Jesus, be with us today. Where there is hatred because of our skin, break down the